Test one, two, one, two. Hey guys, this is John. Welcome back to Middle Ground. We just wanted to remind you that we have a podcast and the podcast is called Radical Empathy. It's all about having empathy for perspectives that are far outside your own and kind of challenging yourself to see or at least consider other people's views. We would like to thank a few people for helping us put together this episode of Middle Ground. Lawrence Cartwright Boogaloo, who's in the video, as well as Malik Spellman, helped us cast this episode. We want to keep exploring communities and perspectives and cultures that you don't normally see in mainstream media, and we want to bring those authentic discussions to you. So let us know in the comments what you want us to explore. Enjoy the episode. I still think, I'm again, almost guaranteed that I'm gonna die from street violence. Are you okay like, with that though? Well, it's, Have it's, you accepted that as I, a man? I, yes. I wanted my message to impact gang culture. You know, uh, I'm one of you. Wherever I end up, you're gonna, you're gonna know that you can end up there too. I was affiliated with the Blood Gang for my entire life. My heart, my soul, my family are Bloods. I'm affiliated with the Capanilla Park Pyros. It's the Anthos Park Miller Gangsta Bloods. Pyro Gang. Black Peach Stone Jungles. So I'm affiliated with the Roman 60s. Been gang banging for most of my life. No high school diploma, but I feel like I know it all though. <laughs> when you young, you know, the excitement of it, the brotherhood, you kind of like fall victim to it. But I feel like it also prepares you for the real world and gets you ready for like a lot of like obstacles that you might run across. Everybody just labels a gang member as just a terrorist threat. You know, just not real human beings, but it's, that's not the fact. Hey, how you doing? You doing brother? Yeah, all right, brother. Squab, boogaloo. Yo, what's going on? My name is Seti Mack. I'm from Atlas Park. I do um, rapping, comedy, and I'm a jack of all trades, really. My name is Jay Nasty. I'm from Camp and Spook Town. Freshly paroled from prison, a certified welder. My name is Squabbler. I'm from the Jungles. I'm an up and coming artist from Los Angeles, California. My name is Skip Townsend, and I come out the West Adams area, and I'm a job developer and also do human development as well. Yeah, I'm Boogaloo. Westside Nellis. I'm one of the CEOs of Rosecrans Entertainment. Uh, my name is YS. I'm from Cabanella Park. I'm an up and coming artist, and you feel me? I do a little bit of everything, just try to play my part. My name is um, AD. I'm from Rolling 60s, and I'm a street activist. Step forward if this statement is true for you. Gangs aren't as bad as the media portrays them. See, we all come. That's the everybody big <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about this stuff. A lot of people like in gangs, you know, we grew up together as like brothers. I can go spend a night at my, my homie's house. You feel like mama feed me, you feel what I'm saying? And together, we didn't came up with ways that we could um, feed the children. We didn't did backpack giveaways. We didn't did all type of shit, but the media, they always put out the negative about us, but they never like, put out the positive shit that we done did. I feel like the media got like an old school perception on what game banging is or what game banging is about. And modern day game banging has evolved from what it's been back then. So now it's okay for Bloods and Crips to go to school together to where back in the days, you couldn't find a Crip at Centennial. You mm -hmm. probably couldn't find a Blood at Crenshaw. Like, you know what I'm saying? So nowadays, we can coexist. They don't never really show the unity of it all. Like, mm -hmm. they, they always show the separation, the segregation. They don't really fathom the, the strength and the power we got inside our community. And I really don't think they really care about that. They put us in this one statistic box, That's how I feel you know? Like and they leave us right there. That's what they want us. but. It's really up to us to say, okay, at least the next, at least, at least the next generation is gonna come with something. It's gonna come with positivity. We living, but we really not surviving. We two in competition with each other. 
everybody hard now, though, you know? So mm -hmm. I see everything on social media and everything. I'm really locked in with all I mean. I posted something positive about me giving backpacks away and stuff at the park and all that with the homies and stuff. It didn't, it got like, what, a thousand views, two thousand views. I get like 5,000 views and I'm posting something crazy, though. You get me? Mm -hmm. yeah, when so when you doing positive, media. you cloud chasing. Yeah. When you doing negative, it's all good because that's yeah. what we used to. That's the bread and butter, I guess. That's what we already do. So what's happening right now is you about to leave a legacy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be a financial legacy. See, if there was something you was doing positive and all them 5,000 views you got, they going to dwindle down to about two, 300 mm -hmm. if you was empowering the community and shedding light and, like you saying, waking people up, mm -hmm. then all that's going to go away. But as long as you got the negative influence, yeah. well, you're going to leave that legacy, but ain't nobody going to be able to eat afterwards. Someone I love died. <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> we ain't even got to get up, man. Just ask your question. <laughs> the first time I ever seen somebody close to me pass, I was, I was young. My older cousin, right in front of my mama's house. Another, and another black man, just, just typical statistic game band. And it's like, visualizing that as a, young, as a young boy, it's like, that's probably one of the reasons why I am who I am today. It's traumatizing, like, it's, it's traumatizing, and it instantly adapts you. To, to, to your community, to your environment, to where you at. Because it's like, if you don't get down like this, you're going to get down like this. I was 19 years old, man, and I had seen a lot of people get shot. But I was sitting there talking to this dude that was actually a kid, Kevin Sykes from 60s. We sitting there talking for about an hour. I'm waiting to go skating. And as soon as he crossed the street, the van pull up. They had been waiting the whole time. And they gunned him. And that's really fucked me up, man, to see that. They could have easily just came up and, and gunned us both. It wasn't about Cripper blood. It was just about that anger and rage, like, man, want to hurt somebody. And man, it, it, it left something, a void in me that was like spiritual. Like, man, what is God doing? But also that rage was like, man, I want to hurt somebody. And, yeah. and, I, and I took it with me from the age of 19 and I just felt suicidal. Like I signed up every day to go out and be dead. I didn't yeah. care, I'm gonna hurt somebody, they gonna hurt me. To this day. I still think, I'm almost guaranteed that I'm going to die from street violence. Are you okay like, with that, though? Well, it's, Have it's, you accepted that as I, a man? I, yes, I accept it because it's like all the negativity I done dished out. See, I want to say something get because this is what's causing me to, to change because I made that same pact, that same vow for my gang that I'm going to die for my gang. I do life for this shit. Yeah. But recent shit has showed me that nah, I got another purpose. I could do something else. I don't mm -hmm. have to die to game banging. Let me, let me ask you something real quick, though. You got a child, a baby, a girl. I got, or... I got four beautiful blessings. You got beautiful four beautiful kids. blessings. So here's the thing. Would you die for them? Of course. But that's not what they want. No, that's, that's they they, they need want. you to live for them. Yeah. And you ready to go out every day and die for them. And them the same people need you to be alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn, man. I done lost so many homies. I done lost some crib homies. I done lost some blood homies. I'm over with this game banging shit. If something happened to y'all, y'all will see that I'm so serious about this shit that I'm on a whole nother note, homie. Respect. You feel me? And I don't want to lose y'all. If motherfuckers don't wake up and let's be save each other so it don't have to be no more losses, we're going to lose. Straight up. I think peace between rival gangs is possible today. I do. I really do. Awesome. It's going to be hard. Look at the peacemakers move. Though. Right, right. I've actually did it. That's why I feel like it could be peace because I've actually sat in a circle and had a conversation with my enemies and we, we, we cleared the air and, and killed our little difference. Now, it's not peace between all my enemies, but it's peace with the main enemies, yes. with us. And we not even gonna call it peace, we will call it an understanding because that's what it was. The understanding was y'all stay on y'all side, we stay on our side. Don't disrespect that line and we good and keep all that internet goofy shit, you oh, know, really? dissing. Y'all keep that shit out of the circle. And we good. And it's been working so far. We had a little bumps and bruises, but it's been it's working. Been working. This, this question was complex to me because I'm thinking, like, are we talking about individually or gang-wise? Are we talking about in today's world or, like, are we working towards the future to, to get better? Because I believe that in the future, sooner or later, we are going to be able to function. Right now, with, with, with things that's been going on and the politics, it's yeah, hard to yeah, see it yeah. with the eight trays and the six souls. That was an eye-opener for L.A. because it was like, that's what modern day game banging is working towards right now, it just takes time. People nowadays, like, it's a revenge cycle. It's people that's gonna, that'll kill you that don't gang bang. 
they they family or friend or yeah, somebody that, my brother. you feel me so, I, so yeah. it's like sometimes the peace don't even be like on us because we're not yeah. bigger nobody bigger than the court no. you know no. so it's like all right how is that how is that one person right there just gonna say it's peace today and then everything else is just peaches and cream i look at it like peace today is out just for the simple cause of the matter like it hasn't been a long period of time without a death or without a retaliation or without a, another man, woman from, 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 from a rival, rival gang getting murdered. Show that you don't want to come to my hood and bust on me or knock me down. Let me show you the same thing. And then once we get that understood, then you can go about your life and go about my, about my business. But it's a thing called leaders and followers. Yeah, yeah. It's some leaders that's going to be speaking peace. You're going to have some, some leaders like, no, they done did too much. It's this history. This is what it is. So it's like, as much as you want peace, I just live life for my individual peace. Joining a gang is a choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that ain't no choice. I mean, no. yeah, I'm gonna step up to that. I believe that at the very bottom of joining a gang is ultimately a choice. The power of influence is, is crazy and, and, and it will blind you to make you think that it's not. A lot of people is family orientated, are born into it. But at the end of the day, I have the choice to say, yes, this is what I want to do. No, this ain't what I want to do, no matter what age I am or not. I feel like it's for sure a choice. It's not like how it used to be where, like you said, you feel me, you, you, you got some type of ties to this game. Nowadays, it's like, oh, that little nigga look turned. Hey, you, you, you hang with a nigga for a cool amount of a time, build a relationship with him. If you really a nigga and you feel me, you really got stripes and rep like you do from your area, you could easily take him over there and make it happen. It's a choice to certain people. Certain people just got to go with the flow. <laughs> this, it's not so much of a choice. It's like, it's like a way of life where, where I come from in my family because we always gang banging. Like, I, I grew up to, to seeing blue rags. I grew up to seeing my brother's gonna fight their enemies at parks. I grew up to seeing dope sacks. I grew up to my daddy whipping dope in kitchens and all that. So it's like, that's not a choice. It's just, it's a, a, you adapt to it. You adapt because that's, I didn't your, that's what it is. this shit. This shit chose me. I signed up and they accepted. You feel me? This shit like the military. Let's not play. I mean, you know, my daddy from Compton, you know, from a kid, this nigga had me in this red Cadillac, slapping through Compton, rolling up weed and, and dope. My mama side of the family, my cousin from Palmer Block Crip. Then I got other cousins from neighborhood Piru down the street. And then I, I moved to the 60s at eight years old. Then my older cousins, they start game banging, you feel me? So it was just a way of life for me. This is what my family was about. It was no choice. I'm luckily I had big homies to where they, they didn't want me to game bang. You feel what I'm saying? They always told me, play football. I had homies that didn't want me to game bang either. You feel me? They was like, AD, go play basketball, go play football. I even had a nigga that peanut. He used to come to me and say, stop game banging. And I used to think this nigga thought I was soft, y'all. But the whole time, my nigga was being a real man and didn't want me to do this shit. You feel me? I want to be Bruce, Bruce Lee, man. Bruce Lee, I want to come home and kick everybody, man. But the Crips was at the movie theater. So we had to fight the Crips, and I'm nine years old, and I'm like, man, I want to go to the movies. So it wasn't a choice. It was like, man, am I, at the age of 13, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to stop being a victim. I'm going to fight back. I'm more afraid of the police than I am of a rival gang. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Man, <laughs> can, I, can I start this? Can I please? Hey, I'm starting this one. I fear the police because they the biggest gang in America. Point blank. <laughs> I think you just spoke so, for all of us. They yeah. basically got all right to knock us down yeah. with, no, with no justice after that. Yeah. And on the side of them cop cars, it yeah. says to protect the sir. Yeah. But yeah. they ain't doing none of that. They, they, they yeah. taking us. So it's like, of course I'm going to fear you because you the one that's supposed to protect us. So I'm looking at you in the sense of, OK, you're supposed to be safety, but no, you really coming at me with your gun out. Right. You feel right. me? But, I, but I'm looking at this man, I know how he coming. Right. It, it's, 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 not, it's not a facade how you gonna come. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for how you gonna come. You feel me? So when a cop come at you, why off top? I'm, if I'm supposed to be protected and served, why I gotta put my hands up all the time? Yeah. Just keep it simple, man. I'm afraid of the police because, let's say for instance, my enemy shoot me and I survive. I can go revenge and honor that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. The police shoot me, I survive. What the fuck can I do? And he can like smoke me and can get away with it. My homies ain't go, ain't go rally up and go smoke them niggas. I know, you know where did it go? They just sent him to Santa Barbara somewhere. You feel what I'm saying? He had a whole other department. Still got his position. That's it. I want my kids to be in a gang. No. 
no. Not at all. Not at all. I don't even got to speak on this. The reason why I wouldn't want my sons or my daughter to be in a gang is because of the way the perception that society has on a gang. It's not about the way the community views a gang because all that is the address. But if my child is from a gang, then I don't fear the communities around it. I fear the police. I fear that if if my son break in a house, well, he should go to jail for a year or two. But if he in a gang, he gonna get a 12 year enhancement. I don't want my daughter to be in the gang because reality, there's only two roads to this shit, either death or jail. It's only few that slip through the cracks. And it's like, I just, I don't, I don't want my kids a gang bang because I, I know how, 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 how gang banging limits you. Definitely. You know, it, 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 it keeps you stagnated. You know, you, yeah. can't, you, can't, you can't go out there and, and, and be adventurous and see yeah. the world. And yeah. Like for my son, my, my yeah. son, he can grow up and, and love a woman. Right. And her brothers could be from, from a gang that, yeah. now you can't, even, you can't even love who you really want to love because, yeah. you know, yeah, just don't, don't limit yourself. <laughs> I don't want my kids to limit themselves, you feel me? This generation of gang banging is, is a gift and a curse because it's kind of beautiful because we come from a generation that we figuring it out we breaking it out we got a lot of black entrepreneurs we got sports players we got rappers we got um people that um got their own clothing lines and this is all people that came from a gang so it's like we not all bad just because we came from a gang but as far as my kids getting involved with that you don't have to gang bang to do all this stuff because you could go way further doing it if without those gang ties but also, gang culture influences every, Tupac got influenced by gang cultures and cost him his life. So it's like, <laughs> so, so it's, it's like gang culture influences everybody, but for my kids, my nieces, my nephews, and everybody under me, I do not want that for them because it, it, it took so much of my life. Me personally, I don't have any kids, but this topic right here, I got a little twist to it. It's the definition of the word because see, us being black, the definition of a gang is, oh, they hoodlums, they thugs. But if you from a white gang, oh, that's a collective community. They just, they just some regular people that do the same thing at the same time every day. So you know what? I just might want my kids to be in a gang, a damn good one. But like our LAPD or our sheriff, some shit for us, you feel me? So yeah, I will, hell yeah, I want my kid to be in a gang, a positive one though. Don't do this video. Real members aren't going to show up. Certified. Like, I already know everybody want to talk. They shit. Certified. I feel like that comment is probably very kind of like valid in a sense because everybody would question that, like, what type of gang members will want to speak openly about gangs on TV, but that's what separates the leaders from the followers of their gang. So it's all, it's all a mindset, y'all. It's really, it's really a mindset. I'm talking about getting over beefing with your enemies and everything. It starts with your mind set first and hopefully I um, can shine enough light to other, everybody see what else, everybody else see what I'm doing and be like, all right, he came from that. He did this and he doing this and now look at him. Yeah, he's still back in his hood, which I really commend Nipsey for everything he did because he showed us that at the end of the day, Nipsey Hussle got so big and he died from game banging politics. He died being the 60 Crip that the world couldn't even believe it, so they said it was a conspiracy. But right, at, the, at, the, right, at the heart of it, right. he lived his life as a real game banger and did what he was supposed to do. And when he died, he died for standing up for what's right, that every game banger should have felt the same way. And it showed behind the love that he got. That, And I feel like as a game banger, that's how you would want your legacy to be when you, when you die. It's like, I'm bigger than game banging. For the people that 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 that, that judge this game banging and all that, it's like this: like, I'm you and you me. I could easily live your life if I was put, if God placed me right there. You yeah, feel me? I'm 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 living my best life that I was given. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. given a golden spoon. I wasn't yeah. given a silver phone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I got this little styrofoam plate and this plastic spoon, and I'm a build and I'm a go with it. So yeah. before you get judgmental and say mm, they game banging and mm, they doing it. Come see, and yeah. it's, it's all about what you make it. Yeah. I never thought that I would be sitting here with y'all. I right. never thought I'd be sitting with no Bloods. I never thought right. I'd be sitting with no Compton Crips. I never thought I'd be sitting with no other gang but 60s. 
And I didn't want to sit with no other game when I was a youngster. I didn't want to do nothing but go hurt people. I didn't want to do nothing but game bang and make the hood proud. But now, that's out the question. Man. My fight is for these people, for them. Mm -hmm. My fight is for every LA game. That's my fight. I'm from every LA game now. So if anybody got a problem with that, I got a problem with them pushing this piece, we gonna holler. We got it out the mud. We ain't had no loan like Donald Trump, no million dollar loan. We got it out the mud. Yeah. All that. All that.